I want to ask you just a couple, just quick questions. We'll bump around for a couple minutes. Um, the first uh, quote, and then a couple questions just about you in particular, from Angus Rogers. Mathematics requires a small dose, not of genius, but of an imaginative freedom, which in a larger dose would be insanity. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, so I like that. It seems to be hitting on this idea that insights come from exploring something that no one else thought to explore because it really seemed like it wouldn't yield anything like, wow, you'd have to be kind of crazy to try working with this structure or to tweak the equation in this way or to um, bring in this, uh, this uh, new feature to your diagram or something like that. Like it, it requires doing something that other people wouldn't think to do and that there's kind of a reason they wouldn't think to do it. Um, and so that too much of that is just indistinguishable from insanity because it means completely violating like the norms and priors for what will work. Yeah. That's a very beautiful quote. That's from one of your videos. It's from li the series Wait, on linear, linear algebra. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying it like, I don't know it. And I was like, well, what? I got another quote for you from one of your videos. What? That's um, so funny. Well, it's fun. That was four I, years ago. I can't remember what yeah, I put in the video I know. four well, years fun. ago. And look, that's <laughs> that's that's the benefit of creating online, right? You can create something years ago, and I can just go on and watch with a whole fresh mind. It exists forever. Okay, one more from that same series. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Oh, uh, yeah. That was fun. Uh, I, I, yeah, I just thought that was like a, a wonderful that one I do remember including because like the whole theme of that series was that to think about matrices, you should visualize them and there's a specific way to visualize them and that you have this like famous thing from Sinnoh where, where Morpheus is saying you have to see it for yourself like that just I mean, come on, the parallel's too strong not to lean into. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of that is true. I think like this, this is the central theme of the whole channel for everything else that we talked about. Like the actual reason I think a lot of people are engaged is because it centers on visuals and we're very visual thinkers and a ton of just like a ton of the mass of our brains goes towards visual processing in contrast to processing other raw sensory information. Um, and I think that it's almost like you're leveraging more computation. And through that, it means that you've like opened up the scope of what people can have intuitions for. Oh man, that is a really interesting point. I mean, I think that there's something even further that's going on is it's the motion of visuals and the way that math moves in your videos that creates an element of resonance. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's sort of maybe because it's, it's, it feels different than reading a textbook and that's the thing that most highlights the fact that it's not the way that you've been experiencing math through uh through school is the the like dynamic nature to it i'm not entirely <laughs> despite what i do for a living i'm not entirely sold that the movement matters that much for the intuitions hmm i think that the movement matters because well i mean it obviously depends on the video but i think that it matters the most when you just have to see how 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 things are represented for example you you talked about the boxes and how the boxes hit each other and then the boxes hitting each other equals pi and the and then when you sort of rotated the sphere in that video i think that it's sort of unforgettable in a way and the unforgettable nature of it sort of makes it sticky in my head how much do you think of yourself as teaching math versus popularizing math versus inspiring people to learn math on their own? Oh, yeah, three different angles. I mean, so when it comes to teaching, I think to gain a new understanding of something, it has to be information flowing from inside your head to out of it, not the other way around. Mm -hmm. So you can't have someone come and like pour knowledge into your head. Instead, they have to evoke it out. And in fact, the word education has its root in, um, has the same root as the word educe, like to bring out. You kind of follow the etymology uh, tree. And I think there's no coincidence there. It's this very Socratic idea. And so in that way, the default for any video or any lecture or any book is that it's not like teaching. But that's a little too easy to say, because really, it's like, it is quite possible 
for a piece of text or for a lecture to evoke something to bring it out of someone. So if there is teaching that happens, it's only because of that. The truth is, though, I, the actual value add, I think, lies almost entirely on the inspiration half um, for like getting someone to feel that math is something that they um, that they like, that they can understand that's worth pursuing further, that they can self-identify with, that can be part of their personality, all of that. In order for that to work, though, you can't just inspire by like saying inspirational words around it. You have to give an actual lesson. You have to give, if not understanding, at least the illusion of understanding in a moment for that inspiration to have any kind of teeth to it. So most of the effort is still going to be around making something understandable, being as clear as you can, finding the elucidating visual, all of that, even if the end goal and the actual mechanism of value add comes from inspiration and not from what will this person be able to recall a few months later? 